All right, hello there, Twitch. It's your boy Goose. Wait, wrong anime. Hi, I'm Shay, also known as Frill Squid, and welcome to Punk Lolita 101. This is a panel designed for more experienced Lolitas who want to branch out into L Punk Lolita. Um, my goal is at the end of this, you will hate Punk Lolita so much that it'll stay really cheap on the secondhand market. Okay? All right. A little bit about me before we get started. My name's Shay. I use they, them pronouns, but you can call me Frill Squid. I've been in Lolita for seven-ish years. I really hate taking photos of myself, so that's why you don't see me on Insta. I'm a grad student in library studies, and my favorite crime is jaywalking. My favorite time jaywalking was when I jaywalked across an interstate to get an almond croissant at 6.30 in the morning. It was lovely. Um, so to understand Punk Lolita, we first need to understand what punk is. Punk is dead, we all know this. It started in the 60s when newspapers tried to find new pejoratives to insult the Sex Pistols with because they didn't like their music very much. The aesthetic came from Vivienne Westwood who styled for them and her shop, Sex, as well as the um, Yes, punk is taking a nap. It's a very long, it's a depression nap. I'm sorry, Lav. Um, so it was a working class subculture, but the Sex Pistols were kind of the vanguard visually. Aesthetically, punk music has rough vocals, general harshness, very simple harmonic structure. The clothing is DIY and distressed, which was very subversive at the time. Not so much now, you can get $500 distressed jeans. Leather chains, studs and spikes, awesome. Physical labor wear, because this was a working class subculture, a lot of the symbols of punk like denim, Doc Martens were originally physical laborers. And there's also the subversion of authoritarian symbols. For the UK, that was the flag, crowns, and as you see in the background, the Stuart Tartan, which is a symbol of royal authority. Here, we just think it's aesthetic. So here are my two examples of punk. On the left is the Sex Pistols in their Vivian Westwood styled wear. They just looked like some dudes. And on the right is a Vivian Westwood Runwood, runway advertisement from 1985, the infamous Mini Crinny style that inspired a lot of Lolita. If you look at it, you can see a lot of the aspects such as up here, we have the corset-like top, which you see in a lot of Victorian Maiden. You have the silly crown, which is making fun of authority. You have a poofy skirt and rocking horse shoes, which are the best. Um, I've only almost broken my ankle like five times in them. It's so great. So punk expansion in the dawn of Lolita. As punk became more international, it entered into Japan. And as it entered into Japan, these authoritarian symbols that were subverted lost their meaning. They were decontextualized. So Jane Marple, Milk, and Shirley Temple, and later Emily Temple used a lot, yes, F to pay respects. They used a lot, a lot of different motifs such as tartan, crowns, flags, all that stuff that had been subversive, but decontextualized, it was just aesthetic. However, Lolita was subversive, of course, for reasons of modesty, being covered up, not really like being modest, as well as a, a version of the male gaze. Sorry, I forgot how to speak English for a second there. So even though Lolita's aesthetics were kind of decontextualized from the punk anti-authoritarian origins, the femininity in itself is an anti-authoritarian movement. And that's my sociology lecture, y'all. Um, here's an early Lolita snap. Um, you can see punk aspects of Vivienne Westwood cardigan. You can tell from the orb on the chest, as well as some really terrific shoes. So this is from Fruits 12 in May 1998. Um, this next one uses a very sweet, sweet baby, the Starshine Bride look in the skirt with a loosely fitting casual top. Um, and again, you see rocking horse shoes, this time the boot style, and that's another 1998. 
And this one, I just adore the clown shoes. They're so big. Even though this is a sweeter leaning style, you can still see it's a little rough around the edges and a little bit punk. So if you look at these earlier snaps, they're not fully sweet, sweet Lolita. They're really quite punk in some ways. So let's move on to what punk is now. So the goal of Punk Lolita is, as we all know, to do immense psychic damage and to look like you came out of a hot topic in 2006. End of story. So Punk Lolita emerged very early on as a Lolita style at the same time as the main substyles did, or even before it's been featured since the first GLB. Characteristically, it has either punk mixed with Lolita, you have the punk Lolita style, which isn't really punk or Lolita, it's kind of a mash in between. And then you have Lolita items that are very much one other type of Lolita, but with punk motifs. Like if anybody picked up the Angelic Forest Girly Gang release, yeah, that's punk Lolita that's also very sweet. Image-wise, you're never going to get a perfect Punk Lolita cord that looks good to everybody. Um, even other Lolitas are going to be like, uh, what are you doing? But that's, that's just fine. Punk isn't about pleasing other people, it's about pleasing yourself. All right, is Punk a sub-style? I would say for historical reasons, since it has such a big place in the GLB, I would consider Punk a full-on sub-style, even though it's just a tiny little theme. Um, insta-wise at this point, but there are just so many themes and so many sub-styles. So does the band shirt skirt trend fall into Punk Lolita? Yes and no. Um, it's very much Punk-like, but the band skirt and shirt, the band shirt and skirt trend, I can speak English, um, really there's a conflation of Punk and old school aesthetics that especially you see in the old school community, because old school was very punk. So yeah, I would say it can be punk. It can also just be sweet with a little bit of punk influence. And depending on how you style it, you can really do a lot of different things with a band shirt or cut so over a skirt. But in general, I'd say it's probably punk. Um, so punk has greater rule fluidity than the other styles. There's more acceptance for tacky, horrible items. You can look, Ida, wear your striped socks, your leg warmers, your arm warmers, your mini hats, your mini crowns. Follow your heart. It, it still follows the general guidelines, but not so much as other um, sub-styles. And you can often show more skin than other styles. It, a lot of punk is from era Lolita kind of times and also chiffon wasn't a really big thing when most of the punk brands were most active so like you would you would probably die in like a long sleeve cut so and a skirt in swampy tokyo summer um so outfit anatomy everybody knows what a lolita outfit is i hope if not this is probably not the panel for you um, and there are some great resources from other people. So hair accessories. You have hats, you have crowns, you have bows, you have headdresses. I am wearing this lovely, lovely um, Summer Kales Boutique headdress that I got from their Garnet Gateau release. It was awesome. Um, you don't see as many bonnets because that's more of a historically inspired classical thing. And the Aesthetic of punk means that they're kind of playfully large or small compared to a lot of other things. The proportions are intentionally off. So here we have an intentionally large Maxis Mambo on the left. In the middle, we have the infamous crown headdress from Metamorphos, which is about the size of my fist, and I don't have a very large fist. And on the right, we have a Spica plaid mini top hat. It's better quality than the steampunk anime convention ones for sure, but it still isn't like classy, classy. Um, so main pieces, you see a lot more skirts than in other Lolita styles. They tend to be shorter, usually around 40 to 50 centimeters instead of the 55 plus centimeter that I see typically in other styles. 
A lot of times you see camisole JSKs with very thin straps that are worn as OPs. And you get a lot of materials, including weird stuff like that one pleather JSK matter released and all sorts of stuff. So here are three examples. On the left, we have a BPN skirt with some interesting gothic -y, um, style, but you still have that punk ruffliness and cuteness, and it's awesome. In the middle, we have Punkuma, which is my love. You can also see Rabbit in the silhouettes, but this is camo. Um, and then on the right, we have a classy Putumayo OP, and it actually looks really comfy right now. So you see a lot more cutsos than in other styles, but there are blouses as well. Blouses, you see them with baggier fit, fewer details. Again, you have the whole oversized punk thing where you'll have like a huge collar or like a regular collar, but it'll have long, long tails to it. Um, you see the layering of cutsoles or camisoles or even band t-shirts over blouses. That kind of punks things up. You see a lot of cotton, but that's mostly a time period thing. If you can figure out how to make chiffon look punk, go ahead. And here are some tops. On the left, we have the God Save the Lolita Cutso from Novala Takemoto and Baby before he got arrested for weed and banned from history forever. In the middle, we have a really fantastic ma'am blouse in the iconic black and red punk colorway. And, well, I think it's ma'am, I forget, whatever. Then we have the chainsaw girl camisole, which is one of my absolute favorites, always gets compliments in public. Um, so, Legwear, striped socks, yes. Harlequin socks, yes. Leg warmer, sure. Follow your heart. Fishnets, yes. Regular OTKs and tights, go ahead. You don't see as many short socks, but it just, it's legwear, you guys. Put something on your legs and have fun with it. Um, and here is the infamous Chantilly Harlequin socks. You can also get them from um, Alice and the Pirates, which they have some cool glittery lame ones. In the middle, you have the abiatage corset tights, which are really good for gothic and arrow-leaning punk looks. And I just think they look dope as hell if you don't look like a baby man like me. And on the right, we have some classic striped socks from Mato with a cute little bow on the ankle. Oh my gosh, they're so cute. Like, I die for striped socks every day. Um, so shoes, there's a wide variety. You can wear sweet Lolita shoes, rarely goth shoes, platform shoes, rocking horse shoes, drawing from our Vivienne Westwood heritage. But really, I prefer Normie brand shoes and non-Lolita specific shoes. You can always wear a black shoe with pastel cord and punk. If you do it, I will give you a big high five and write your name on a list, which I will kiss every night for good luck. Um, Yes, Sock Dreams is good. Um, Thunder Thighs, um, Snag Tights has some plus size options as well. And we love colors, does striped tights in like every single color ever in plus sizes. So if you have a yen for those striped tights, but your plus is size and you, you don't want your thighs to lose circulation, please, please look at We Love Colors. Their quality is great and they have every color. So here are the shoes. We have the Vivienne Westwood Melissa collab on the left for another iteration of rocking horseshoes. In the middle, we have Doc Martens, which I love these. They're so nice and chunky. And on the right, we actually have a Demonia Mary Jane. None of these are Lolita brands, but they're really solid punk shoes and if, if you choose any one of these three, you really can't go wrong. Yeah, I love a chunky dock, love a chunky heel. Yeah, if if you own Demonia, um, you should stop owning them and give them to me. That's just a recommendation. All right, outerwear and layering. This is where you can really get fun. Um, vests are pretty common. You get a lot of vests from Black Piece now. Corsets especially ones with attached butt capes, are great for creating a different silhouette. Right now, I am wearing a black piece now um, corset that's not really a corset. 
jackets. Black Piece now released a lot of like suit jackets with details like rivets or studs, stuff like that to punk it up. Very nice for autumn. Coats, yeah, you don't want to freeze in the winter. You can wear a cutso as outerwear. You can just follow your heart with this, but butt capes especially. Um, just, I'll talk more about butt capes when we talk about brands, because finding a good butt cape is like Cinderella territory. So we have the Sheglet Restraint Corset on the left with attached butt cape. It's $178-ish on their web shop right now. Then we have a parka with bunny ears and the bunny ears are pierced and I just freaking love it. We have a nice jacket for your gothic leaning cords. Third, that's from Black Piece now. And then we have the angelic pretty riders jacket which they've released variations of about 5 million times. So if you're into pastel stuff, definitely pick up one of those guys. It's great. And again, girly jumper skirt, it would go great with that. So accessories. Accessories are another time to shine. You can wear your gothic jewelry. You can wear wrist cuffs. I like wearing punk leather cuffs and chokers. If, if you find something that fits your outfit, you can wear arm warmers. And if you have big money or you decide that the only thing you want for your birthday is a Vivienne Westwood pair of studs, you can get a pair of Vivienne Westwood earrings and be the brand whore of your dreams. So here are some examples. You have the Vivienne Westwood orb necklace. You have some very fun arm warmers from Maxisimam again. And you have a bracelet from Closet Child, which is super cool. Um, I don't trust pleather normally, but for punk, I'm willing to give it a try. Makeup and hairstyles. Do what you want, because a pirate is free. Like, I, I honestly don't know what I'm doing either. So punk Lolita motifs, as it's a very like old sub style with a lot of different factors playing into it, you have a lot of different motifs. You have the Western punk motifs like distressed clothing. You have tartan crosses, crowns, flags, things like that. Um, you also have skulls, death, and horror imagery from the more post-punk gothic side. You have a lot of fairy tales and Alice in Wonderland and even some Disney-inspired stuff. A lot of board games and playing cards, um, chess especially, um, and roses. Roses are in every Lolita style. You can't go wrong with them. You have architecture. The CAD window series from Putumayo is especially famous for this, but there's also the Metamorphose 2002 release window skirt and ESK, which lives nestled deep in the cockles of my heart. And animals wise, butterflies are kind of the big motif for Black Piece now. So you see a lot of them. You see a lot of cats and rabbits and you really see some great cat ears, rabbit ears, bear ears on your cutsos, your hoodies, your coats, your capes. It's great. Animal ears, so tacky, so beautiful. So here are some coordinating tips. It's kind of freeform here. You want to make sure your occasion makes sense. So like, I would not wear six inch demonias to a farmer's market where there are children who I might stomp on by accident. You also want to keep your silhouette balanced. If you're going to tease your hair all the way out, you might want to wear a poofier skirt or if you're going to wear a loose cut so op you might want to just opt for a nice pair of flat mary janes instead of something hugely chunky um same thing with silhouette balance keep it all balanced color balance i regard stripes and harlequin patterns and polka dots as their own kind of color thing that you want to make sure your black and white patterns are balanced as well as your normal color balance but don't fixate on exact perfect matches that's not punk at all if things don't match or if you have unmatching shoes or if you get some child blood on your socks or something that's fine everything's great um theme cohesion you see the same themes over and over in punk like 
I have about 20 gazillion cutsos that are all Alice in Wonderland. So if you pick up a pair of Alice in Wonderland socks and some Mary Janes and like a plain skirt and an Alice themed skirt, just every cutso, that's your wardrobe. Um, and item mood, because there's so much variety, a lot of items are going to feel more gothic or more sweet. So if I were wearing that black piece now skirt, that's kind of gothic and has those big punky checks and asymmetrical drape to it, I probably wouldn't throw in a pair of super frilly angelic pretty cuffs. Yeah. Um, so here are some examples from the GLB. This is like early GLB stuff. So this is H Nauto Frill, which is one of the many sub brands that he had back when he actually designed for his own brand. You can see those are pretty classic normal normal looking um, shoes. You have a standard Lolitas silhouette, a huge huge bow. I love that, and then lace tights, which. I'm not a fan of that type of lace, but lace tights go with everything. Pick up seven pairs. Um, you have this Miho Matsuka coordinate, which is kind of more punk than Lolita, but I included it to show variations on the silhouette that still read as Lolita inspired. You have this awesome, awesome Putumayo coordinate. I love the mismatched socks, the random, the random platforms that are bright pink the polka dot corset, this is flawless. Wait, no, it's a jacket and a blouse, whatever. I don't know what's going on in here, but it's great. And you can see some exciting hairstyling up there. Um, then you have Misako wearing, I believe, Putumayo again. Um, that's a great little combo of striped tights, striped skirt, and a hoodie that probably has rabbit ears on it. I can't tell it, but I feel it. And then you have a more gothic leaning black piece now coordinate. You may not be able to see, but these are some awesome striped tights. Um, I love that purse. It's just very goth, but also very punk. Baby Misako is the best, especially when she's not imprisoned on the waifu couch. Um, so here are some examples from Insta. This is Masha Ruby wearing a very like Pudumayo style um, coordinate with some awesome, awesome boots. I love those boots. And the poof on the skirt, the color balance here, this is very much a typical kind of casual leaning punk cord with some devil e e horns, because why not? You have Mega Puddy 64 with this very kind of sweet looking but still punk inspired coordinate. I love the Doc Martens here. They really pop. And actually this coordinate reminds me a lot of like the Angelic Pretty site page from 2005 had this really amazing kind of punk sweet cover. So this is a good example. You can see with those wrist cuffs there, the Vivienne Westwood bag that's still heart shaped. You have a good combination of sweet styles and motifs with still some beautiful punkiness. I honestly, I love these coordinates so much. This is Bug. They're awesome. They're wearing coordinate and the chunky-ish Mary Janes that everyone should have by now. And look at that mini hat. Thank you so much, Bug. You have brought us beauty with that mini hat. Um, but you can see here the kind of integration of both old school and punk and sweet. It's kind of all mixed together in this like beautiful mess of screw you. And this is Serial, which I have no idea whether I'm pronouncing that name correctly. Um, love it either way. I love the big hair. And this is really an interesting example of taking a super duper sweet main piece and punking it up with a lot of punk things that aren't strictly punk lolita you have the crop jacket which isn't really like super common to brands you have again amazing shoes i love these shoes and you have the huge hair this is wonderful example of how you can use any brand any style for punk as long as you punk it up right so this is a example from a Chinese brand on Taobao, Cat Highness. And I 
I'm not too um, knowledgeable about the Chinese styles, but I think it's important to look at the different directions that these things are going. So this plays a lot on the asymmetry, but you have some more synthetic materials and you have a tool overlay rather than a chiffon overlay. But those are some pretty darn good shoes, like solid. Um, this is from Two Alice. You have animal print, which reminds me of the old days when Hime Lolita meant Hime Gyaru inspired Lolita. Um, and you have a lot of punk asymmetry. You have a hat rather than a hair bow. And again, big stompy boots for defeating your enemies. Awesome. Um, and then you have Diamond Honey, which they definitely did a thing here. Um, I like the combination of spider web and leopard, and it kind of reminds me of what if Meta in like 2004 had a Taobao store, and it's it's just there's some great creativity for Chinese brands. Y'all should check them out. So these are the dead brands. Moment of silence for our deceased fellows. Um, Kudumayo had a Lolita Punk aesthetic, the short skirts, most of the things that are truly what I would consider made for Punk Lolita are going to be Kudumayo. So if I can get some Fs in the chat, um, then Black Peace Now and Peace Now. Peace Now was a sub-brand of Black Peace Now that focused more on the sweeter and punkier side of things, whereas BPN was more arrow and gothic side. And I have so many things from them. It, like if you cry every time. Um, but luckily, because they're out of business now, you can get them for really cheap on Mercari and Frill. So follow your secondhand dreams, folks. Um, so here are some alive punk brands that exist. Um, and I highly recommend for things like Cutso's. Algonquins, you get is some great outerwear, great corsets. Um, Sex Pod Revenge has ridiculous cutsos. Dear Art, cutsos, accessories, and the very occasional skirt. Um, H. Naoto and sub brands, the actual dude isn't involved in it anymore, but there are so many different options. Naplush, um, very gothic punk stuff. A lot of their stuff is in older um, DLBs. Mr. Corset or MR Corset, I don't know which, and I'm scared to learn now. Um, anyway, some really interesting cutsos incorporating patches and embroidery and stuff. Hellcat punks, punk jewelry, um, all sorts of stuff. Oz on, you get a lot of very ornate vests blouses, whatever. I I really have no idea how to pronounce anything, but somehow I've spoken English this far, so yeah. So spend all your money, guys. Um, these are some alive Lolita brands. There's MAM and MA, which is their punk line, and of course, lovely sides, so beautiful. If, if you were Maxis Mam, you are guaranteed to be a wonderful tacky bench, and I cherish you. Um, Meta, which is great for size flexibility, creativity, so much fun stuff from Meta, especially their older stuff with Pankuma and Rabbit. You have Alice and the Pirates, which was started out as Baby's um, punk leaning sub brand, and they still have some Occasionally really interesting stuff, especially outerwear. They're great for socks. Um, Bodyline has some designs, but honestly, their quality has gone down, and I'm they're sus, very sus. Um, Choco Chip Cookie. They are an in-business brand that does um, very old-school-styled stuff. So if you want some of that old-school influence in your punk, peanut butter and chocolate, yes. Spica is the accessory brand that worked alongside Putumayo for years. So if you want a horrible little hat or a horrible rabbit, they got you covered. Atelier Piro is a wonderful gothic store brand supplier that also has some punk suitable stuff and some interesting corsets and stuff. 
I love them. They are plus size inclusive and becoming better and kinder every day. They have online shopping for all of us foreigners who look longingly at airplanes and miss a time before the parallelogram. Um, Shaglit, which is by a former BPN designer, and Miho Matsuda, who, which is a gothic brand that often does some other punk things. Um, yeah, nothing is sponsored. I just have overwhelming affection. Okay, let's talk about Marble. Marble is the twin brand of Visible, and they were super tacky and prolific in the early GLBs, but I have to recommend them with reservations because you have to know what you're doing to get a good set of marble. And I personally have never known what I'm doing in my entire life. Okay, I love marble. It's just, it's hard, okay? It's so hard. I cry every time. Or maybe that's just the false eyelashes falling into my glasses. All right, here are some brands outside of Japan. Um, Agato Designs, who is a DC-based brand, Queer Run, um, lots of really cool accessories, um, body chains for those aeropunk leaning things, awesome stuff. Puvithel, um, some interesting t-shirts that could work, and also skirts. Um, oh yeah, Agato Designs does custom. She's great. I love her. Um, Hard Decora, you have some really punky t-shirts that work as cutsos. Angelic Forest, um, th they do a lot of different things, a lot of different substyles, but their girly gang is like the pinnacle of sweet punk, as I've said before. Summer Tales Boutique, they have their nostalgia series, which this headdress is from. Tons of tartan, tons of old school stuff. Really great for the old school leaning punk. Our, our memorandum, totally old school and punk, and they have hoodies and all of that casual stuff, as well as some really amazing bloomers for those of us who like a little peaky peaky. And Peacock Lorem, if you're the sort of person who thinks the only problem with mini crowns is you don't own enough of them, Peacock Lorem, they've got you covered. Though their store envy, I think, isn't working right now, but affection. I love them. Um, so here are some Chinese prints. You've got Fan Plus Friend, which I recommend for the standard sizes, but I've heard people have issues with the custom sizes, and their designs are hit and miss. Foxtrot Lolita does some kind of Atelier Boz gothic -y, punky, asymmetry, dark stuff. Dark Star Island does old school ish cotton stuff that has a lot of use, as well as the occasional cutso. Sibyl Heisei, they're the ones who put out one of the many wonderful, wonderful denim jumper skirts. So, highly recommend. Cat Highness, which we featured before, is a little bit um, l less pricey but has a lot of the asymmetry and coarsening and other gothic -y, punky stuff of Foxtrot. Hard Candy is a plus size oriented brand, which has some super duper cute cutsos. Diamond Honey, I'm gonna recommend with, rather, recommend with reservations due to quality issues, um, but they do have some very interesting designs for inspiration, styling, um, when you don't feel like wearing a blouse. To Alice, again, they're they're not strictly a Lolita brand, but they do have some very interesting designs. Again, their quality is kind of hit or miss. And the infamous Punk Rave, yes, they are still alive. Um, I was surprised too. They're mostly a punk store. Their quality is not there, but it's worth a look. Like, even if you're not prepared to buy from them, it's always worth a look to browse these things and spend zero money. All right, secondhand. I'm assuming that most people who are watching this panel know how to buy secondhand Lolita or have a lot of money. If you have a lot of money, please give it to me. I would appreciate it muchly. So you have Mercari and Frill for your secondhand where you can find a lot of Pudumayo, a lot of Black Peace Now, and a lot of Lolita brands. 
you have YJ Auctions and MBOK, which is, okay, I was joking about the money thing, um, which aren't as active anymore. Closet Child has a lot of more casual stuff for really cheap. If you want like an Axis Femme blouse and you want to throw a band shirt over it, you can get things for cheap, cheap. Um, Wonderwell, honestly, really overpriced for punk stuff. Like on Mercari, I've never seen a Putumayo OP go for over a hundred dollars, and on Wonderwelt, I've rarely seen it go under. So these are the special, um, my special secondhand stores for my special boys. Um, Violet Blue has a lot of punk stuff. Fairy Angel is more casual and has some sweet leaning stuff. Tokyo Alice has a little bit of everything and Maiden Clothing. Like these guys don't update as much as Closet Child and Wonder Wealth, but you can get some really good deals and they're better for very specific brands. And you can get certain Lolita brands that are always overpriced other places for a lot cheaper there. Lace Market, um, the pricing is often comparable to Wonder Wealth, meaning not great. But if you find someone friendly, um, you can have a grand old time. Um, eBay, Depop, English, Mercari, that's more for like if you're grabbing a pair of lightly used punk boots where somebody went to their podiatrist and realized they're banned from heels. Um, lightly used stuff on those sites or punk stuff or verified Vivian Westwood is there. But please don't use eBay for Lolita. I, I love you guys way more than that. Um, In-person swap meets with your com. God. If only. Unfortunately, the Panatone has made this difficult, but swap meets are definitely your best bet for just people trying to get rid of their crap and big recommend. So if you want to go into a handmade punk lolia, first of all, it's cheaper. It's so much cheaper to buy from Mercari. Like, I cannot overstate. You can get a skirt for $30. If you spend $30 on materials for a skirt, um, you're going to spend at least $100 worth of pulling all your hair out. Um, so keep skirt length in mind. The archetypal punk lolita skirt is going to be about 40 to 50 centimeters long. It's going to have two to three tiers with um, kind of an A-line shape with a lot of flair. Yeah. <laughs> so that's your guideline and fully elastic waist. Most punk lolita skirts that are fully elastic go up to 100 centimeters-ish, but I really wouldn't recommend going beyond 95 centimeters because it'll, it'll screw with the aspect ratio, as the photography people say. For cutsos, um, you can definitely just take a band shirt, um, take off the sleeves and gather them, crop it, you can add a ruffle. If you have a serger, lettuce hems are fire. Putumayo uses them all the time. Puffed sleeves, um, even just adding, even just cutting out the t-shirt collar and turning it into a square neckline with some ribbons can totally transform your look. Use a stretch stitch for niche, a stretch stitch for knits um, so that you don't bust a seam. A lot of people who use plain weave stuff for Lolita all the time may not know about stretch stitch. I'm telling you, you need it. Um, unless your sewing machine is like a treadle machine, you should probably have it as well. And rivet spikes and studs are really easy to add to like a cheapo jacket from the thrift store that you cropped. Um, you don't even need a sewing machine or any sewing skill to add them. And they're really awesome for just punking things up. Just don't stab yourself and be sure to be careful while washing that stuff so you don't end up with like coleslaw but made of pleather or whatever. That would suck a lot. Um, laundry tips, again. Most punk is machine washable plain weave cotton, thank God. Otherwise, I wouldn't be able 
there is no special thread for knits, but you may want to invest in a ballpoint needle if you're going to do a lot of knits because it'll it won't cut into the threads the same way and it'll be good stuff there. Sweaters, you do get sweater dresses in Punk Lolita as well as sweater vests. You want to gently cold wash it and air dry it. Cutsos or t-shirts, um, you can wash them. You don't have to be stink ass. Um, pleather, you don't wash it. You can use alcohol spray, one-to-one -one vodka to water or any similar 20% by volume dilution. For screen prints, um, especially if you're bustier in the bustier area, um, you're gonna run the risk of cracks. So if you wash it in the washing machine, you're going to wanna air dry it to keep it from, yes, I did say stank ass. I am a very respectful academic. Um, wool, you sometimes get real wool coats or wool tartans, all stuff like that. For that, I highly recommend that you cold water wash or hand wash it and air dry, use the wool setting on your iron, all that good stuff. Items with spikes and studs. Some of them you can wash, some of them you can steam, some of them you just gotta like let the sun sanitize them and use your alcohol spray. But just be careful. You don't want to ruin your investment in this beautiful piece by letting it shred itself to bits in the washing machine. Not that I have any laundry related trauma. All right. So here's some cool Punk Lolita media. If you're a cool kid who wants to be cultured in Punk Lolita, I didn't include Death Note because you weeaboos have already watched it and read it. Um, so the best one is obviously Nana, which is the platonic love story between a really dumb Lolita and, well, not Lolita, a really dumb sweet girl and a also really dumb punk and the strawberry um, glass that they bought at a cheapo store. Um, strawberry Switchblade, pop group from the 90s that's kind of post-punk, kind of new wave. Just look at them. They're not punk Lolita, but they are punk Lolita, okay? Dekawanko is a manga and live action show and TV movies. The wardrobe for the live action stuff was actually provided by Putumayo, so very punk Lolita. Nanakita, the singer, musician, modeled a lot of punk stuff in the um, GLBs and word on stage as well just really nice to listen to super aesthetic coordinates and gothic and lolita psycho for those of us who like really crappy crappy horror films that's what you want gothic and lolita psycho for um it's just gloriously crap she wears this kind of sort of gothic kind of punk outfit that might or might not be a coordinate and it's it's just some sweet, beautiful garbage like we all deserve. So these are my recommendations for Lolita, specifically Punk Lolita Media. Um, if you have any other recommendations or comments, drop them in the chat. And I think I have run through all of my slides. So if you have any interrogation to do, I'm all yours now. Hello. Wait, let me just, how does computer? Wow. So my personal favorite punk brand that's a hard one, but just looking statistically, I have the most stuff from Black Piece now because they just covered such a wide range of styles. My favorite Black Piece now piece that I picked up was a closet child find that was a new with tags wool cape and it has fluffy fuzzy little bear ears and sometimes I'll just wear the cape and pet the bear ears because they're super duper soft. Um, so peace now, but Putumayo is up there. Um, 
honestly, anything can be a punk brand. Um, even Innocent World can be a punk brand if you know what you're doing. Um, but Black Peace Now is my favorite. Any other questions? I am watching the chat. Yeet, 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 correct. Um, my favorite punk and not Lolita brand is probably, I mean, Sex Pot and Revenge has this very not politically correct cut, so that says F policeman on it. I also like Deer Rart because they have a lot of like Sarawal pants and OG suitable stuff. And I don't know, it's it's just a big mood when I look at a Deer Rart model, but it's 50-50. Honestly, punk brands, I go more by item than by general aesthetic because every everything is different and it's more about fitting my themes than specifically the brand. Um, I need to drink some water. How to balance the look when you have very little to none hair. Um, I do look cute. Thank you, Chazzy. Um, so I, I've always had my hair at least this long, so I don't have personal experience with that, but I highly recommend just go ham with it. You can look wear a big, big, like, naval officer's hat and look great like that. You can wear that meter-wide jester hat that Alice and the Pirates had for that fashion show, and you can wear mini hats. Part of it being punk is you don't have to worry about um, it looking too cutesy or anything. I would recommend, though, if you're going really over the top, with your skirt poof level, you might want to, like, if you have just a simple mini hat, you might want to add a couple hair clips or some jewelry or more dramatic eyeliner just to keep it balanced. But do not worry about not having the look for Punk Lolita, because it's punk. If you don't have the look, that just makes it even more punk. So, yeah, so about that time that I jaywalked across an interstate highway to get a, an almond croissant, it was in Salisbury, Maryland at 6.30 in the morning, and I was very careful about it, and I think I also got an iced coffee with it. I really like iced coffee because I'm gay. Um, does anyone have any questions about jaywalking or other fun crimes? Because... I have never done a crime, and yeah, I think it would be an interesting topic of discussion. Let's see. Is jaywalking the most punk thing I've ever done? Legally, perhaps. Um, the most punk thing I've ever done was actually an academic conference. Um, I'm a percussionist, and Unfortunately, because I got the airline's super duper cheapo, um, their cheapest possible fare, I couldn't fit my drum on board with me. So I grabbed an empty trash can, turned it upside down, dragged it um, to the front of the room, and I played the trash can. So that's the most punk thing I've done recently. Um, but that was, that is the most punk thing I can disclose legally. Um, is there a trend from another substyle that I'd like to see incorporated into Punk Lolita? I just want to see more from Punk Lolita in general, but a specific trend, um, I think it would be really interesting if we had more 
more indie brands, just more layering of material, t-shirts in punk cords. Um, so that wasn't an answer to the substyle thing, but t-shirts are more interesting to me. I think it's all about balance. Like I've worn a plain t-shirt with a Putumayo skirt as just an outfit. I don't post it as a coordinate because please no bully. Um, it's not Ida. Um, if it, if they think it's Ida, then that makes it more punk. Strawberry jam donuts, you are 100% correct. But I would say if you can accessorize it up, that might make it feel a little like more out there, like add a bow tie, add a scarf, um, add one of those big rosettes from Moss Badger that has like spaghetti or a dead guy on it. Spaghetti and dead guys are great. Um, and make sure the band is like either a really good one or a really terrible one. Um, like if you wear an insane clown posse t-shirt with your Lolita, I will, I will worship you forever. I will like just follow, follow your taste, follow your heart. And if somebody says that you're Ida, then you're probably exciting enough to piss them off. And that's punk as heck. Um, you can get really cheap insane clown posse tees on eBay. Who said Nickelback? Nickelback is a valid choice if you genuinely like it. Um, oh, of course it was you. If you make, so making things into a cut. So if you go back to the live journal days, there are some really super duper old tutorials for that. Um, one thing I like doing is a lot of cutsos just end at the belly button with a ruffle so that you can wear them over top of your elastic waist skirt and it looks good. So what you can do with a regular t-shirt that's a bit longer is you can seam pick off the sleeves and then slash and spread those sleeves directly onto the bottom of the shirt as far as you can and ease the gathered up sleeves into it. T-shirt surgery, that is such a promising live journal name. Um, and I like Cutsos cause the iron is in the basement and I saw a lizard down there once and I vibed with it then, but like, I don't vibe with lizards on my brand. So, I like cutsos because you don't have to iron. I the life journal days gave us so many beautiful things. Okay, so it wasn't actually it was a five line skink, which is native to the area, but it was a mature five line skink. The juvenile five line skinks have five bright blue lines, which are bright blue due to the microhelical composition of their scales, refracting light in that way. But as adults, they become plain brown. So judging by that, it was an adult five line skink and it's long since dead since that was a decade ago. There, you're never gonna stop learning in a panel with me. I, I do not shut up. I will never shut up. Skinks do, honestly, reptiles are slept on. Um, if, if you want an indie fashion brand that's not Lolita or punk, but it's punk in spirit, um, there's fashion brand company, which sells bearded dragon sized clothes and human clothes too. Corn snakes, oh yeah, corn snakes, they're they're good boys yes i i saw beardies are really great beardies just if you're into punk you gotta appreciate the ugly things and the creepy things and be like yeah of course um punk doesn't have as many prints as things but because it's so reliant on screen prints which you can mimic pretty well with just fabric paint if if you wanted to make a cutso that's just an old t-shirt 
that you poof the sleeves up and added a layer of lace and drew a scale puppy on, like, that's good too. You see the weirdest things on punk cutsos. Like, if you go to my wardrobe post, there's this piece now cutso that's like a rabbit wearing a chain, um, and it just says peace now. And that kind of bemusement that that sparks is priceless. So there are three minutes left. And if nobody has another question, I'm going to tell the story of my first convention I went to in Lolita. It was 2015. I was a freshman in college. Now you know how old I am. I was wearing Puna Mayo, and I apologized to the comm leader because I thought that Puna Mayo wasn't Lolita enough. Now I know Lolita is an arbitrary marker, and Puna Mayo is Lolita as I think it is. And more importantly, I didn't have to keep a huge petticoat in my dorm room. So this has basically been the panel that I wish somebody had shown me when I was a freshman in college and wearing Pudu Mayo stuff and Peace Now stuff to class every day. Well, every day there weren't labs because I want people to feel like brand supremacy isn't as important. Like follow your aesthetics, follow your heart. And if you're not having fun with yourself in the fashion, who is it for? Like photos are temporary, but um, criminal records are forever, you guys. Let's see what else. Oh yeah, stay hydrated, y'all. Ikea is a valid brand. Um, things you find at the thrift store in the kids section that are from old Halloweens are a valid brand, especially if they have like a glow in the dark wolf on that, that's a valid brand. Um, any Anything that you find inspiration in, that's the DIY spirit of Punk Lolita. Unfortunately, I do not have the glow in the dark wolf with me, but I promise that I will post, I'll post a coordinate that somehow incorporates this head ass glow in the dark wolf coordinate. Like, okay, last thing about buying fashion items from the Halloween pop ups um, Party City and Spirit Halloween and all those other places. 50% off at the end of the season, and they have these spiderweb fishnets that are amazing. They're great for gothic, um, they're cheap, they're good for punk, they're good for Halloween, they're good for goth night. Yes, the Michael's Craft section. Um, yeah, steal your grandma's jewelry. Um, say rude things to a goose. Follow your heart. Shay out. If there aren't any more questions, we're running up on the hour. So thank you so much for listening. I can't believe people bothered to watch on a Monday. And if you have any more questions, y'all have my um, Discord and you can interrogate me. I love brainwashing the youth. Bye-bye.